Consolidated's bomber, the B-32 Dominator, was the final heavy strategic bomber to enter the U.S. Army Air Force's service. It was initially created as an alternative, just in case development of the ambitious Boeing B-29 Superfortress failed. Before the conclusion of World War II in the Pacific, the Dominator was sent to Japan to fight, albeit in a limited capacity. Perhaps its most remarkable moment came when it took part in the last air battle of the war, days after the Japanese emperor had announced Japan's surrender. Boeing's B-29 Superfortress would eventually participate in one of the most infamous missions of World War II, when it served the pivotal role of dropping nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The main goal was to develop large bombers that could carry heavy payloads over miles and miles of distance at high speed and high altitude. Research and development, as well as the construction of the bomber, was the costliest wartime program surpassing even the Manhattan Project. However, Boeing Superfortress had a rival bomber heading to market, threatening to fulfill this role. The contracts for both plane prototypes were drawn and signed on the same day, September 6, 1940. Consolidated's project was being developed as a backup should the Boeing plane fail to meet its ambitious goals. Consolidated based its proposal on a design, Model 33, which was similar to the B-24 Liberator. Designed as a large Davis wing with a twin tail, the bomber had an extended fuselage with a rounded nose. All told, the aircraft weighed 101,000 pounds. As far as power goes, Consolidated's bomber used four Radio Wright duplex cyclone power plants, ready to give 2,200 horsepower. The plane was to be pressurized and armed by remote-controlled retractable turrets, boasting a total of 14 machine guns. The first plane was built next to the Army Air Force's base Tarrant Field Airdrome. Unfortunately, Consolidated's bomber plant assembly line was six months behind schedule. This delayed the first test flight until September 1942. However, after initial testing revealed severe problems with the pressurization systems, gun turrets, and landing gear doors, each of these features was eventually scrapped from the design. The model exhibited recurring issues with cooling and oil leaks. To be sure, the Superfortress engine also suffered from such problems. The first B-32's armament consisted of eight machine gun turrets in the dorsal and ventral parts of the ship, with three additional cannons in the outboard engine, which could fire towards the rear. Two more machine guns were mounted to the lateral wings of each propeller. However, controlling the turrets required crew members to use periscopic sights. These sites were coordinated by a computer system that was highly sophisticated for its time. The first prototype resembled a flattened version of the B-24 Liberator as it first took to the skies on September 7, 1942. By March 17, 1943, Consolidated was granted a contract to build 300 B-32 planes. Still, issues in development persisted. After 30 test flights, the first prototype crashed during takeoff on May 10, 1943. It was totaled. By July 2, 1943, the second prototype was ready for flight. After extensive testing, the Air Force requested several changes. The plane was sent back to the drawing board. There, its role changed to a medium-altitude bomber rather than high-altitude. This was done primarily in response to the lack of progress developers faced when fixing the pressurization systems. Other modifications included a newly installed yet traditional stepped cockpit, as well as more conventional gun stations. All turrets were converted to Sperry A-17s or Martin A-3FAs for manual aiming, and the payload increased to 20,000 pounds. Furthermore, a conventional tailplane arrangement was introduced, which likened the plane more to a PB-4Y2 privateer aircraft. This implementation sought to solve the recurring stability problems with which the first aircraft was riddled. Successful testing of the brand new prototype 
encouraged the Air Force to order more than 1,500 B-32s. In September, the first was delivered. It was too late. The Superfortress already started fighting in China. The first B-32 was ill-fated. It crashed when its nose wheel collapsed upon landing on the exact same day it was delivered. By January, a retrofitted version of the plane, this time without weapons, arrived in the country, which served only as crew trainers. The Army Air Forces conceded that developing the B-32 was a fail-safe plan in case the B-29 program disappointed. However, the B-29 played a combative role in the war and did so highly successfully. To support B-29 groups, a plan to include B-32s in the Pacific failed when word that only five planes were ready for rollout by 1944's end. By that time, the necessary number of B-29s were already operational. At the beginning of the last year of World War II, the Air Force continued to use the modified production models to train crew members. The delay of B-32 production and the success of the Super Fortress redirected the aim of the B-32, which was sent back, rearmed, and deployed. The few B-32s that participated in combat were mostly sent to the Pacific Theater, as more bombers were needed there. The first B-32s destined for the operation were under the auspices of General George Kenney commander of Allied Air Forces for the Southwest Pacific Area effort and the U.S. Fifth Air Force. He initially requested B-29s from the Pentagon, but they were reserved for strategic bombing. His request was swiftly denied. The B-32s were his secondary, yet more available option. After General Kenny organized 11 missions for the aircraft, he took three B-32s with him to Clark Field in Luzon in the Philippines. His aircraft arrived in May, and the tests were completed by mid-June 1945. The three planes were assigned to the 312th Group of the 186th Bombardment Squadron. They carried out four combat missions, the first taking place on May 29th, against a supply depot in Antatet, then a sugar mill in Taito on June 15th, and afterward an alcohol plant in Haito. The last mission conducted by the group took place on June 25th, 1945, Several bridges leading to the major port city of Keelung in northeastern Taiwan were destroyed. The following month, the 386th Bombardment Squadron officially transitioned to using the B-32 Dominator aircraft. Regardless of the B-32's merits, the Army Air Corps was mostly drawn to the performance of the B-29. Therefore, only the three B-32's were ever sent to the Philippines for operational testing after the 5th Air Force requested. The 386th Bombardment Squadron eventually received the first Dominators to raid Filipino and Formosa Island targets, which were meant to intimidate Japan and decrease morale. The squadron received all the necessary aircraft for full integration in July. Subsequently, the 186th Squadron redeployed to Tontan, Okinawa in August. They flew several reconnaissance missions over the Japanese islands. Late on August 15th, the Japanese Emperor announced his intention to surrender to the Allies. He ordered his armed forces to stop resisting. Nevertheless, flights from the USS Missouri aircraft carrier continued into early September to ensure compliance with the terms of surrender. Likewise, they provided support to the Allied forces who could enter Tokyo unencumbered. Yet the Japanese on the ground interpreted the American flights as hostile after the recent scars of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japanese pilots later claimed that they feared the United States would bomb Tokyo as well, a violation of their surrender agreement. Other pilots claimed that seeing U.S. bombers over their capital instilled rage in the Japanese people. On August 17th, Japanese fighters intercepted American Dominators on a recon mission. 
they harassed the bombers as American crews returned fire. Neither side managed to injure the other. However, tensions were peaking. The bomber unit opted to perform follow-up reconnaissance missions to discern whether the intercept was an isolated event or a part of deliberate aggression. That same day, Japanese pilots engaged in aerial combat with Russian planes that were aiding a surprise amphibious landing. This incident created yet another conflict with the defeated nation, which took days to resolve. Early morning on August 18th, two B-32s departed for Tokyo. Both planes were sure to board three additional photography specialists from the 20th Reconnaissance Squadron. Both aircraft completed circuits at altitudes between 10,000 and 20,000 feet. By late afternoon, 17 Japanese fighter planes left Yokosuka Air Base to intercept. The 14 A6M0 fighter planes and three N1KJ Shiden flew at over 400 miles per hour, armed with four rapid-fire 20mm cannons. While it could not perform well at high altitudes, the jets were formidable. The Japanese fighter planes swarmed the B-32s, firing. The ten machine guns on each B-32 Dominator returned fire. One American B-32, the Hobo Queen II, was hit on the upper port side turret. The plexiglass covering burst, and the gunner was gravely wounded. Another Japanese fighter managed to shoot at the fuselage, piercing an aerial photographer's legs. Inside the B-32, the specialist received a tourniquet and was moved to a cot. They endured further damage when a gunshot made it into the Hobo Queen II's fuselage yet again and struck a crew member's chest. The aircraft dove steeply to escape its attackers. The momentum generated by their weight enabled them to evade the Japanese. Both planes, while severely damaged, made it back to base by early evening. The Hobo Queen II suffered terribly, losing an engine and sustaining damage to the rudder. Making the rounds after landing, the pilot counted 30 bullet holes in its fuselage. Crew members spent days, some weeks, in recovery. Sadly, one did not recover. He was the last American airman casualty of the war. On August 19th, the Japanese military moved towards removing propellers from their planes to avoid unprovoked attacks on the B-32s. Contracts for the construction of B-32s were rescinded on September 8, 1945. Production ceased the following month. After that, the Army Air Corps decommissioned the 116 aircraft left in their arsenal. Ultimately, they felt the B-32 was unnecessary. Many of the aircraft were salvaged at Arkansas. An additional 38 B-32s were sent to Kingman Army Airfield in Arizona for disposal. The last B-32 Dominator was temporarily displayed at Davis Monthan Air Force Base following the end of World War II. Nevertheless, it was scrapped in 1949, existing only in the memory of World War II's last battle. Mm -hmm.